Reports are emerging that the families of ISIL fighters and injured fighters themselves will be allowed to leave rebel-held areas near the Syrian capital, Damascus. They'll allegedly be given safe passage from the Palestinian refugee camp Riyamuk and then possibly taken to the ISIL stronghold of Raqqa. So for more on this, Gabriel Elizondo joins us live now from the United Nations. And Gabe, what do we know about uh, UN involvement in a possible deal here? Well, not much, but what I can tell you is that a UN official did confirm uh, to us, Al Jazeera, that the UN is, quote, involved in this potential deal. This UN official is backing away from uh, reports that it's a UN broker deal. Instead, this UN official tells us, and I quote, the UN is an observer, an observer to the agreement concerning Yarmouk, but not part of it. Uh, that's literally all we've heard uh, from the UN or all the UN officials would tell us. Uh, what this deal actually entails uh, is a little uh, cloudy at this point, but the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, a London-based NGO, is saying that, as you said, it would potentially open up a clear passageway for uh, potentially hundreds of ISIL fighters and potentially their family members as well, safe passage out of that refugee camp and back to the ISIL stronghold of Raqqa. Now, what's unclear is if any of the other armed factions inside that refugee camp would be party to this agreement or not. That would be the Al-Qaeda-linked uh, Al-Nusra Front, which is operating in the refugee camp, as well as pro- and anti-government militants, or uh, uh, as well, that are also operating there, that have sort of divided up various areas of the sprawling refugee camp and sort of taken them over. So a lot of questions uh, still, but uh, the UN uh, is saying that they are involved in this potential, keyword potential deal, we're hearing that if it does go through, it could happen as early as Saturday when you could start to see some of these fighters uh, leaving that refugee camp. So some of the fighters will be leaving. We know that the Yarmouk refugee camp has been the scene of heavy fighting near the Syrian capital, Damascus, and of course many civilians trapped inside. Why would any potential deal be important? Because the UN uh, says that there are about still 18,000 refugees, innocent civilians, living inside this refugee camp, and the conditions are horrible, primarily because there are so many fighting factions inside of there that the UN cannot get aid inside. Ban Ki-moon, the secretary general of the UN, said himself, he, he said that Yarmouk refugee camp is, quote, the deepest circle of hell. So there are 18,000 people that desperately need help, but the UN cannot get it to them. So the thinking is, if they can get some of these uh, ISIL fighters out of there, uh, and potentially other uh, fighters as well, it could open up a passageway to get uh, some sort of help uh, in there. Now, of course, the Assad uh, government of Syria probably would support this deal, we would think, because uh, they would want ISIL fighters outside of this refugee camp because it's just on the outskirts of Damascus. Clearly, uh, the, the UN wants access there or better access so they can get some aid to people that need it. But again, it's important to note that if this does happen, it could be a glimmer of hope in what has been a very, very desperate situation in Syria for many months and years now, really. But it's important, again, to note that this is, deal is not done yet. Uh, there are potentially still obstacles in place. But again, if it, if it does happen, uh, we're hearing it could happen as early as this Saturday. We'll be watching very closely for um, any developments on this. Thanks very much, Gabe Elizondo, live for us at the United Nations in New York.